you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone, this Sunday morning. We give God the praise for being here. This is Apostle Hopkins, and we are trusting the Lord that most of you are having a fantastic day. We're waiting for everything to get in line. Lord, you are so faithful. We praise God and honor him for everything that his Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. So we give God the praise and we give God the glory and we give him all of the honor in Jesus name. Hallelujah. This morning, I'm going to be talking about a message that's called healing hurts and wounds by separating from the area of pain for a season. Amen. Now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you in prayer, we thank you right now for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your wisdom, Father God. We thank you for your word that rules richly in our lives. And we ask, Lord God, as we look at uh, Jacob and Esau and the conflict that they were doing through, we're trusting God that you use this as a means of giving wisdom to your people. You know, I was riding today as I went to for my, as you know, for my coffee break. Amen. At my Wawa's. Yes, I am giving a commercial for Wawa's. Not an unofficial one because I enjoy their coffee and I enjoy that moment. As I was on this break, you know, the Lord uses many things to inspire. And I was listening at a radio station. And here goes what a doctor said. A doctor giving an interview on the radio said, pain medication used properly to help the body heal because receptors causes inflammation because of the pain. And he says, um, and I, as I heard him talk about how, what, these, what this pain medication did to the receptors, what it actually did is tries to separate the pain the, that the person is going through so that the body can begin to heal. Because if the body stays in constant pain, the healing process that it takes to make it kind of get slowed up. Now, I know I'm not giving a, a real strong medical definition, but it was just a layman's term just listening. And it made me think of some of the pains that we go through. Do you know that there are seasons in life and seasons even in family and seasons and circumstances with relationships that the road to healing is to separate for a while to give it time for yourselves to heal. And I'm going to be looking at the brothers Esau and Jacob, which was profound. Now, I'm going to bring you up to the deal to try to show you the issues. Good morning. God bless you, everyone. Thank you for coming on. God bless you. God bless you. Now, I'm going to use the example of Esau and Jacob, and I'm just going to go over and highlight it just a little bit. And then we're going to take time to look at the healing of the hurts and wounds that these two brothers had to go to by separating for a season. The pain and the hurt was so great. Now, y'all know the story. I will, I will just highlight it real quick. Then I'm going to jump in Genesis chapter 31, verse 3. Here goes the deal. Most of you knew Esau was loved because of his venison. Jacob's mother, Rebecca, loved him, period. Matter of fact, his brother, Jacob, and let's call it what it was. His brother, Jacob, his name meant supplanter or deceiver. Now, can you imagine being born in a family with someone that can be shady? I maintain to tell you, Jacob was shady, and so was his mama. They, listen, they, Jacob turns around when Esau is, is, is at a state of mind where he was heavily depressed, amen, and, and Esau sells his birthright for food. Oh, you hearing me? So Jacob deceives him out of his birthright, then his mother helps him take the blessing away from, from Esau. Are you hearing me? So here we go now. Matter of fact, this rift in the family was so great. The trauma, the hurt, and the issue was so great. And that's where I'm standing right here. The trauma was so great that Jacob had to be sent away from home because Esau was going to get him. Esau eventually, out of revenge, out of anger and hurt, his mama couldn't stop it, and his daddy couldn't stop it. Why? Because Esau was done so unfair, even his father's love wasn't even based upon loving Esau alone. It was based on loving only Esau's performance. Now, get a load of this family. By the way, there are four basic things that I'm trying to get you to get out of this message. A, 
Number one, the reason why you have to separate from some situations that are extremely hurtful is to get over the trauma. Yep, that's right. Sometimes the reason why folks stop talking in families, the reason why folks who used to be friends, who used to have a relationship, the reason why they stop dealing with each other, they do it in order to get over the pain, the trauma. Also, they get tried to heal from the bitterness and unforgiveness. Because at the point when it happened, you are so bitter and you are so hurt that bitterness and unforgiveness is operating. Number three, to consider whether to keep the relationship or not. Did you hear that? To consider whether it will work or not. Sometimes you have to back away, lest you go manifest and do something wrong, and which is not according to the way you want to walk on. And the final stage at the end, the, the full goal at the end, is for you to spiritually grow past it. Now, I'm going to go over these four one more time. The reason why, in some cases, it is wise to separate yourself from certain situations is to get over the trauma. In other words, the issue that happened is so extreme that you need to get over the trauma. Number two, the situation and the rift between you and the individual or the individuals is so hurtful until you become and they become bitter and unforgiving. These are just the stages of human nature. The next stage to consider is you back away to consider whether you're even going to have a relationship with them ever again. Now, I know somebody said, well, maybe we're supposed to love everybody. Right now, you're dealing with the stages of getting healed. And the final goal is get your spiritual life back intact. In other words, spiritually grow past it. Now, I am what I call a supernatural, God-anointed, powerful general of deliverance who teaches what I call realistically. Realistically, when people in your family or friends hurt you deeply, realistically, saying I'm blessed and highly favored is not exactly how you feel. You feel the trauma and pain. You feel the hurt and bitterness and betrayal. You feel like, I feel like getting away from this relationship or having nothing to do with them. And finally, the Lord will bring you around. Hopefully, you'll start dealing with your spiritual life. What Jacob did to Esau, what Jacob and his mother did to Esau in that family was twisted. It was trifling and it was hurtful. Now, I have counseled. Now, Evelyn's sitting here with me right now. Evelyn, in my time of ministry, I have counseled families where in the stuff that was done in the family, mother and father helped get it done. I have counseled people where in their mother or their father helped one of the other siblings wound them. And that wound is deep. Esau was totally affected by this. And there came a period of time, y'all know the story, this ain't about Jacob as much as it is about Esau. Now Esau had to, Jacob was sent to Laban. And by the way, Esau might have thought, I'm going to get this boy back. Esau didn't have to get Jacob back. Let me tell you what got Jacob back. The laws of reaping and sowing. Can I school y'all on something? I'm trusting and hoping by the spirit of God that I can get many of you wonderful believers to understand. When God says, vengeance is mine, I will recompense. God is saying that I set up the laws in the spirit of life in the universe, that what you sow is what you reap. Come on. I'm not talking about karma. I'm talking about a divine principle that God, the creator of everything made, that our actions will cause a corresponding reaction, Evelyn. Meaning Jacob did not have to get Esau back what got Esau back was his own ways. Y'all, what got Jacob back was his own ways. Jacob ended up going to his uncle Laban. Can you imagine this? Now, Esau might have been 
get, I'm gonna get that boy one day. I'm, I, 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 I hate him. I don't want nothing to do with him. I don't want him to get in my face. Scared of my face, Jacob. Do you imagine Esau? Esau's over there feeling that. Jacob is over in Laban's house getting back what he did to his brother. Because you see, just the way that Jacob deceived Esau, the laws of reciprocity, the laws of reaping and sowing brought back to Jacob's life the same thing he'd done to his brother. Can I tell y'all something? Y'all can tell everybody this. When God says vengeance is mine and he will recompense, Try your best to ask the Holy Spirit to heal you from the wound and trauma, to heal you from the bruises that took place and the situation you're dealing with. But trust me, life has a way of giving back to people exactly what they did to you, and you ain't got to do it. What we got to be concentrated on is how to guard our own heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issue of life. Now, so. Back to the scene. Jacob is now fleeing Laban. The man who did him like he did his brother. And it's something else. It's real tough when it comes back on you. Can anybody say, man, that's the way it operated. But check this out, my dear friends. Jacob is fleeing away from Laban. Laban is told by God, let him go. And you bet not touch him. And so Jacob and all of his herds and all of his children and wives, they're leaving and they find out, oh my God, Evelyn, they find out, Evelyn, that Esau is heading towards them. Now, Jacob is scared to death because his brother that he had done wrong, that he hadn't seen for a long time. But what Jacob did not understand was Esau had been away from him long enough to heal forward. Let me let me get this out. Here we go, baby. Genesis 31, verse 3. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy father and thy to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. Now God is saying it's time now for you to return back to the family. Now, can you imagine this? He left with a riff. He left with a rip and a wound and a hurt. Genesis 31, 3. And God is saying now, you return to thy family and kindred. Verse, verse uh, 31, to, uh, 33 through 32 and 10 says, Jacob has spent more than 20 years staying with Laban and paid him Aram. He had been gone for 20 years. The space of time, Evelyn, was 20 years, sweetheart. The two men prepared their meeting like warriors about to enter into a battle. So after 20 years of that trifling mess that him and his mama had done to Esau, Ev, here goes Jacob now getting ready to meet a brother that he ain't talked to in 20 years. How many of y'all know that sometimes the people who have done things to you and time have gone by, Evelyn, do you know some people don't understand that you're not there where you were when they hurt you. You have moved on to a place called Next. That's one of my books, by the way, a spiritual place called Next. Well, what happened here was, but Jacob didn't know it. Now, Jacob is thinking, look, I done did my brother wrong. I have been trifling to him. My brother's going to get me. So are you noticing this? There, The two brothers, One's mindset had healed forward from the other's action, but the one who had done him wrong did not know it. Let me read uh, chapter uh, Genesis 32, uh, verse 3. Genesis 32, 3. And Jacob sent messages before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. So what Jacob does, Evelyn, he's sending messages, and he's got to have somebody else speak for him because he had lost his brother's ear. In other words, if Jacob and Esau didn't talk, how many of y'all out there have had situations in family or with friends? Y'all don't talk no more. Y'all can't conversate anymore. And the only way you can communicate, it takes a third party. And really the third party well, actually is stuck in the middle because y'all can't talk to each other. That's how deep wounds can go in families. That's how deep wounds can go with friends. And here goes these two brothers. 
going through this evidence. In the book of Genesis 32, verse 7, listen at this. When he saw that Esau was coming, when he saw that Esau was coming with strong herdsmen and with many cattle, Genesis 32, 7, then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. He, Jacob was petrified that his brother was going to get him back for what he did to him. Now, Ab, you know what, babe, girl? Ab, Jacob had done him wrong, and in, in, in the natural, Esau could have gotten him back. And by the law of the world system, Esau would have been right. How many of y'all hear me? How many of y'all have been done bad and you could get them back? And in, in a way, somebody said, well, I understand why you did it after what they did to you. That's where Jacob and Esau was. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two bands. Now, what is he getting ready to do right here, y'all? Let me tell you what he's getting ready to do. He's getting ready to separate things so that if his brother got him back, he wouldn't get everything. In other words, he thought his brother was going to kill him. And Genesis 32, 8, and, and, and said, if Esau come to the, one, to the one company and smite it, then the other company, which is left, shall escape. Evelyn, Jacob had no idea that Esau wasn't chasing him. See, when you have bitter wounds and hurts in past relationships that you have to get away to heal. Uh, listen, I believe that it was of God that Jacob and Esau separated, lest Esau kill Jacob, and many things prophetically would have never happened. But just because you're operating in a prophetic promise don't mean your stuff don't come back that you're done. I'm going to say that again. Just because you are blessed and used by God, it doesn't mean the stuff you set in motion will not visit you by the laws of reaping and sowing. So Jacob thinks Esau is where his mind was. Actually, to me, Evelyn, it seemed like to me, Ev, Jacob grew. I mean, Esau grew past what, what Jacob was still dwelling on. Ha! Ah, is that bad, Ev? That is awesome. I'm going to say it again. Esau grew past what Jacob was still dwelling on. Do you have anybody in your life that thinks you're still mad with them and you're not? They done you trifling. They done you wrong. But God had brought you over it. You got past the trauma. You got past the bitterness and unforgiveness. You got past, uh, you even knew that you needed to leave them alone for a season. And now you are on a path of spiritual growth. Let me get back to these guys. Genesis 32, 8. And he said, if Esau come to one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. Genesis 32, 6. And here goes what he said. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother. Now, though, he praying to God, God, deliver me from the hand of my brother and from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. So he's asking God, Lord, deliver me from my brother. I fear him because I did him wrong. I fear him because I stole his birthright. I took his blessing. As a matter of fact, the only thing he could get from my daddy, I messed it up. See, at some point, Evelyn, Jacob had to own his stuff. But what he didn't realize, glory be to God, that he was rustling with his own issue. Esau was not chasing him. Do you know there are people in your life it, that you've had to separate from, that you've had to have no dealings with, that in their mind, they think you're still battling them, when in reality, you're not. What you are at, where you are at, is past what happened to you. You had to heal past without them giving you chance to apologize or them coming to apologize. I'm going to say something to some of you out here. There is a place in life that you got to get to the place where God has healed you, wherein whether the person that hurt you apologize or not, you're moving on. You're building your house. You're building your life. If y'all get together again, that's a plus, Evelyn. If not, you've got to live on. Are you hearing me? Oh, another thing, Ev, check this out, babe. Did you notice 
that Jacob's actions to Esau swallowed his children and wife in it? In other words, I try to tell some of y'all that some of the rifts that you got in your family, you done drug the wife, the children, and all the rest in it. Jacob's wife hadn't done anything. Jacob's children hadn't done anything, but yet because of the rift, because of the triflingness, because of the bitter wound between these two brothers, Jacob was thinking Esau is gonna get my family. He's gonna attack my family. And Evelyn, in some cases, some of the attacks that's happening in some of people's families, Evelyn, is attacks coming from issues between other family members and the other people ain't done nothing. Some of y'all are living that. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. How many of y'all like when we preach? You know what I say, Evelyn? You know my old saying, girlfriend? I like to put meat on these people's bones. I like to make these people in the Bible human. Not so supernatural, just like you, you and I. There have been issues in our lives that innocent people who they ain't got nothing to do with it, even in our family, wonder why you don't want me to talk to Aunt Mabel. How come Aunt Mabel don't talk to uh, 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 Uncle Willie? And, 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 the, and how come their children seem like they don't want to play with us? And they don't never call us, and we don't never call them. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because a hurt and a wound was so great that the only way a, a, either of the two of them could survive, they needed to part, to part for a season, perhaps, just perhaps, giving it time to heal forward. And in some cases, it doesn't even come back together again. I'll tell you the truth. That does happen. Let me move on. So here's Jacob. He's rustling with his fear, Evelyn. And in Genesis chapter 32, verse 26 through 28, Jacob rustles with an angel. And this angel that rustles with Jacob actually changes his name. Here goes what it said in the 27th verse. Now, as Jacob is rustling with this angel, here he is. He's at a crucial place. Isn't it amazing where God can take you to another level when you face your stuff? Did you get that, Ab? I'm going to say it again. God took Jacob to another level while he was fearfully facing his stuff. Finally, guess what? Elevation came in Jacob's life when he had to face the fear of the things he lived and did in the past coming back at him. It pushed him into a spiritual place. I hope somebody hears this. This is real talk, just like my cousin Sabrina, you said it well. This is real talk here. Jacob has a supernatural visitation by the angel of God, by the angel of God's presence. And Jacob is scared of his brother. And here meets him, this man. And he realized, didn't realize that this man was an angel. And Jacob holds on to him and says, I'll not let you go lest you bless me. I'm, I'm going to hold on to you, Lord. I'm going to hold on to you, angel of God's presence. And the angel touched Jacob in, this, in his inner thigh and touched the seed you and caused him to limp. That means he wore the wound of his actions, although his body was healed and he was elevated. In other words, glory be to God, he left a memory of rustling. Now, I'm going to tell you what he had to rustle, what, the, what, what he was rustling with. Jacob had to wrestle with that thing in him that made him Jacob, supplanter and deceiver. And notice, Evelyn, when he touched his leg, his leg limp. It was showing, just like us, having something in our character, and we're limping with that thing. And God wants to touch it and bring, uh, not a uh, healing, but bring an awareness and change you to another place. That's what happened to Jacob. When, 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 listen to this, good God Almighty, I feel like preaching this morning. He said to him, I will not let you go until the break of the day. I will not let you go except thou bless me. So Jacob is wrestling with this angel. But this angel, his wrestling is actually God. Come on. And he said unto him, verse 7, 27, Genesis 32, 27. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, my name is Jacob. Now, guess what? He had. Listen to this, y'all. He said, what is thy name? This is Genesis chapter 32, verse 27. He said, my name is Jacob. He was saying, my name is supplanter. My name is deceiver. My name is the one who treacherously tricked my father and deceived my brother. 
My name is the one who took my brother's birthright. My name is the one who did the trifling things my mama taught me to do. My name is, come on, the one that wounded my brother. Amen. Stole his birthright and I had to run. That's who I am. That my name is Jacob. And listen what this angel of the Lord said. Listen what God said. And he said, thy name shall be called no more. This is the 28th verse, Genesis 32, 28. He said, and thy name shall no more be Jacob. Uh-oh. His walk get ready to change. <laughs> ah, anybody hear me? My name shall no more be Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. Now, Evelyn, check this prophetic word. While he's... Fearing his past, good God Almighty, why he is fearing his past, God turns around and touches him and changes his name. And he said, thou shalt be a prince with God and with men and has prevailed. Got that? So now he's ready to face his brother because of his staff. Did you notice it wasn't Esau that had to rustle like that? It was Jacob. Somehow, some way, by the grace of God, Esau had gotten over the issue that made him and his brother no longer deal with each other. You getting this, Evelyn? Esau was not the one that God had to wrestle with. It was Jacob. Are you hearing me? Verse 33, 4. Genesis chapter 33, verse 4. When Esau saw Jacob, now, now, he comes from rustling with this angel. He now has a new name, Jacob does, Israel, a prince with God that will prevail with God and with man. And now, the next day, he's meeting Esau. Still a little afraid, but God had gave him a prophetic word, Ab. Jacob, look at human nature. You see human nature here, Evelyn? Human nature, even with a prophetic word that you are an overcomer, you will still fear the ones that you've done stuff to. So Jacob feared Esau still. And Esau, Genesis 33, 4. Esau wouldn't think about him. Esau had done got over that. What was those errors Esau got over, Evelyn? He got over the trauma. He got over the bitterness and unforgiveness. He had to part with his brother for a season. And he was on his way. Esau had already entered into his place of blessing and spiritual growth while his brother Jacob thought he was stuck in the last place they left him. Somebody on that said, I'm not stuck in the last place you left me. Type that out, Evelyn. I am not stuck in the last place you left me. You left me hurt. You left me wounded. You left me broken, but I'm not stuck there. You left me angry and full of bitterness and full of unforgiveness. That's what Esau is saying, but I done left that place. I done moved on. Good God Almighty. Genesis 33, 4. And Esau ran to meet him and embraced him. And he fell on his neck and kissed him. And they wept. Come on, somebody. Can you hear me? I'm talking about a family that was jacked up. Evelyn, Jacob, Esau, Isaac, Rebecca. That family was jacked up. They had issues. And here goes these two boys now getting ready to heal. By the way, it's a, I know what I dared to, I dared to say. They were twins. They, they were minutes apart in birth. Even when Esau was born to get ready to come out the mother's womb first, his other brother takes him out and changes places. So all of Esau's life, he's had to put up with situations in the family where he was always pushed aside, honored because of his venison. Whoopee, Esau. His mother loved his brother and he knew it, but his mother did not have the same passion for him. That's what Esau grew up with. When Esau in Genesis chapter 25 married uh, two Hittite women, his mother and father said, those girls are grief of mine to us. They ain't good enough. Well, what is they not good enough to be in? Your trifling family? You're telling Esau these girls ain't good enough when your daddy only loved him for his venison and his mama helped his brother to deceive him? Really? Now these Hittite women aren't good enough? Oh, God, I'm getting ready to get off in here. I better leave this thing alone because I'll preach it, Evelyn. Esau ran to meet him, verse chapter, Genesis 33, 4, and embraced him, fell on his neck, and kissed him. Why? Because Esau has spiritually moved on. Esau had healed past revenge. Esau had healed past revenge. Look at Genesis 33, 
33, 8. And he said, what meanest thou by all this drove? Which I met. And he said, these, these are to find great in thy sight, my Lord. He turned to when I sent his brother all of these chattels. Anybody ever heard that in your life? Folks that need to just give you an apology, but they can't do that. So instead, they want to give you a gift. I got news for you. Save your gift giving and just own your stuff, and, and we, can, we can work from there. And even if you don't, I got to go live past you. I need it to separate. If I stayed in your presence, it would have only perpetuated anger and hurt and bitterness. Now, I know some of y'all saying, brother, I've read, yeah, the word says that the way. We are human, yes. It takes us a while to catch up with the word. Are you hearing me? So here he is sending his brother a gift because he's scared that his brother was going to do him like he did him. He was afraid that his iniquity, but God had already prophetically told him, I'm giving you favor as a prince with God and with man, and you shall prevail. Genesis 33, verse 9. And Esau said, what meanest thou by these drove which I met? And he said, these are to find grace in thy sight, my Lord. And Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Ah, good God, am I hear that? Man. Esau said, I have enough, my brother. My brother, I made it despite you did what you did. My brother, I'm blessed. My brother, everything that happened at home tore me down and broke my spirit. But my brother, God still bless me. You, you deceived me out of my birthright. You deceived me out of my blessing. But God, what my father couldn't give me, what my mother wouldn't give me, God gave me. Good God Almighty. Word of the Lord declared, when thy father and thy mother forsake thee, God said, I will raise you up. I feel like preaching. Good God Almighty. And they said, what? He said, and Esau, 33, 9. And Esau said, what have I? He said, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. Keep your stuff, bro. I'm good. <laughs> Verse 15. And Esau said, let me now lead, leave thee with some of the folk that are with me. His brother now is after they have embraced. Now, here goes what you're looking at. See the real picture here, Evelyn. The real picture was a family that has so much issues that the only way you could heal was to get away from them. The only way sometimes in certain relationships, the healing, it, you're getting away, not to hate them, but you're getting away to save your life and even theirs. You're getting away to get away from, just like pain pills, separate the pain from the receptors so that you can heal faster. That doctor that I said earlier, he said that when you, when you are under constant pain, it is hard for the area to heal when, that, when the pain receptors are shooting off certain things that cause inflammation. But God, God knew that Jacob needed to get away from Esau so that Jacob could reap what he sold. He needed to get away from Esau so that Esau could heal past wanting to kill his brother. He needed to get away from Jacob so that Jacob could have the rustling that would change him from being a supplanter and a deceiver to a prince with God. He needed to get away. Come on, somebody say he needed to get away. I'm just about done, soldiers. Esau said, let me now leave with thee. Genesis 33, 15. Esau now sends part of his troop to protect Jacob's flock. Evelyn, not only did he forgive him, not only did these two brothers embrace not only did they get over and get past it, but the brother began to protect the other. Oh, Esau did take the gift because Jacob said, please take it. And Esau said, okay, I'll let you bless me. He said, but here goes what I want to do. I don't want your children weary and worn out moving too fast, my brother. So Esau said, let me now leave with these some of the folks that are with me. And he said, what needeth it? Let me find grace in thy sight, uh, in the sight of the Lord. And Esau returned that day on his way into Seir. And I'm going to say it again, Evelyn. And Esau returned that day on his way. That word way in the original language actually means the course and the path of life. Esau was able to go forward in the path of life that God had for him. Let me say something to you all. 
some of you right now, there's been issues with family, with friends, with ministries you were connected with at one time, with people who legitimately hurt you. They caused you pain and they caused you hurt. I want to tell you, there comes a time that you have to get away from them. Yeah, yeah, I'm in it. Yeah, I know, I know. We we, we supposed in church, we supposed to say we always just hang together. No, sometimes you cannot. Sometimes the answer to healing is separating to get the healing so that you can deal with all the conflict that the emotions go through. It was a normal emotion. Here goes the normal emotions again. Normal emotion. It takes time to get over trauma. Normal emotion. Normal emotion. When you are hurt and betrayed and done wrong, you do feel bitter. And you have sometimes you do feel like not forgiving them. That's human normal emotion, normal situation. Sometimes you have to back away from the person, even if it's family, even if it's ministry, even if it's someone at work, you have to back away from the relationship so that the hurt and the wound can be healed because you see the receptors are keeping it going. And also you need to back away so that you, my friend, can spiritually grow. Well, guys, this is what Evelyn and I are bringing to you this Sunday morning. Evelyn sitting beside me. Love your girlfriend. She's sitting beside me doing the monitoring. Listen, if you would like to hear other messages by me, amen, go to Ivory Hopkins YouTube. That's Ivory Hopkins YouTube and subscribe. Please subscribe. I'm trying to build up my YouTube channel. Also, you can go to ivoryhopkinsvimeo.com. Amen. We have messages there. I have a host of books on my website as well at, at, at our, our pilgrimsministry.org. That's pilgrimsministry.org. And you can avail yourself to many. And on pilgrimsministry.org, Evelyn, we've got books and, and, and that we have written on pilgrimsministry.org. There is MP3 downloads. Glory be to God. And listen, if this message has been a blessing to you and the Lord touches your heart, amen, why don't you get bless us and cash app us this morning? Amen. It's called General Ivory Hopkins. That's my cash app address. General Ivory Hopkins. I wouldn't care if it's $2, $3. Cash app us and bless us in what we are doing. Well, guys, I'm going to tell y'all like I usually do. I'm getting ready to get up out of here. And remember what I keep saying to you all. Remember, God is watching. God bless you, my dear friends. Amen and amen.